The scapula is a much more complicated bone. The flat part, or blade, is roughly triangular, with an upper border, a lateral border, and a medial border. The blade isn't really flat. It's a little curved, to fit the curve of the chest wall. This smooth concave surface is the glenoid fossa. It's the articular surface for the shoulder joint. Above and below the glenoid fossa are the supraglenoid tubercle and the infraglenoid tubercle, where two tendons are attached, as we'll see. A prominent bony ridge, the spine of the scapula, arises from the dorsal surface and divides it into the supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa. At its lateral end, the spine gives rise to this flat, angulated projection, the acromion, which stands completely clear of the bone. The clavicle articulates with the scapula here at the tip of the acromion. This other projection, looking like a bent finger, is the coracoid process. Here's how the clavicle and the scapula look in the living body. Round the edge of the shallow glenoid fossa, a rim of fibrocartilage, the glenoid labrum, makes the socket of the shoulder joint both wider and deeper. This flat ligament, the coracoacromial ligament, joins the coracoid process to the acromion.